All right, here's the object. You may want to stand up. Using nothing but your fingers, break the apple in half. Nothing but your fingers, break it in half. Ready, go. Uh, excuse me. I didn't know. Look, look, look. Did she win? Winner. All right, everybody try. Who, who didn't do it yet? Oh, really? Really? Okay, we'll go ahead and get started while they're getting that together. Um, for you, those of you who may be visiting this morning, um, I am Allison and I work with our small group ministry. That's what I do around the student ministry. And we are on our Seriously Ridiculous um, series for the summer. And um, thank you. And um, so this morning you had a poll question of who is the most powerful person in the world? Okay? And you guys gave lots of answers. Someone actually got it right, which is impressive. Um, 11 people said God, which is good. It's a good one. Um, 30 people said Lindsey Brooks. <laughs> um, 40 people said Regina. Um, one person said Donald Trump. A couple said Oprah. Justin Bieber. Superman. Um, one person said Barack Obama. Um, one person said not the President of the United States. Um, but the actual answer, his name is, is U Jin Tao, and he is the president, not, okay, we're going we're gonna to go through those again in a minute, don't, there we go. You could put up the first slide that I had, first picture slide, they'll go right in order, okay? Um, here we go, here he is, this is the president of the Republic of China, and he was voted by Forbes, as they did this, as the most powerful person in the world, okay? And the reason he was voted the most powerful person in the world is because he has control over 1.3 billion people, okay, in his dictatorship, which is one-fifth of the world's population. And he doesn't have to go through any kind of bureaucratic system or anything like that to do what he wants to. He just does it kind of thing. So that's why he became the most powerful person in the world. All right, what I want you guys to do this morning is I need a little bit of help. Can you guys help me this morning? Okay. All right, so what I want you to do, I want you to think for a second. Who do you think the richest person alive is? If you were to think of the richest person alive, who would you think of? So one person at a time. Hold on. Yeah. Mark Zuckerberg. Okay. I don't know if I know. Okay, Bill Gates. Okay. Who else? Anybody else? Yeah, Melissa? Oprah? Okay. All right. Well, the person that I thought of, and y'all are going to have to hang with me because we're going to go back and forth. Yeah. Taylor Swift, okay? No. no. All right, here's who I thought of. I thought of Bill Gates as the richest person in the world. That's who I thought of. All right, so if you want to think of somebody who's a mega celebrity, who would you think of? Taylor Swift? Oprah? Anybody else? Angelina? Okay, I, yeah, I thought of Oprah. Okay? See a picture of Oprah? That's kind of who I thought of. Or maybe someone who has a lot of power and money. Who do you think of like that? Donald Trump. Donald Trump. That's exactly who I thought of too, was Donald Trump. There's the fire. You're fired. All right. But what are we going to do on the board is I want you to think of, and I want you to just call it out, um, or actually we may do one at a time if I can't hear you, but I want you to think about um, if you were able to have anything you wanted, anything at all, what would you want? Someone raise their hand if you have something. If you could have anything you wanted in the world, what would it be? If I could think of anything. Anything you wanted, what would it be? Yeah. You really have a thing for Taylor Swift, don't you? Okay. World peace? Okay. Okay, give me one more. A beach house. What would you buy? The mall. The mall? Oh my gosh. The mall? You could have anything you want. You could buy a mall so you could shop. Okay. Now, real fast. If you could have anybody in the world, you could date a celebrity. Emma Watson. Or Emma Watson. Okay. I know you're going to say Taylor Swift, aren't you? Anybody else? Okay, here, I know we can think of lots of people, y'all bring it back up here for me, 
ones, okay? So this is who I thought you might guess. You may tell me I was completely wrong. So I thought maybe if you were a boy, maybe like Blake Lively? Yes? No? Yes? No? And if you were a girl, and now I'm really into Twilight movies, so I was thinking like Taylor Lott.
But what happened is after after a while, all those things that were chasing kind of didn't satisfy him in the long run. It didn't make what he was wanting. And it gave those things may have given him a temporary feeling of fulfillment, but they didn't fulfill that void that he really was feeling inside. And they weren't really substitutes for the real thing. And so Solomon, he was kind of like this cup that I have right here. I'm going to open it up. And this was just kind of like his soul. And no matter how much water he put in it and tried to fill that up, it just kept running out. And he couldn't fill up the cup enough to keep the holes and the water from running out of his life. So, after a little while, we'll see in Ecclesiastes, he kind of smart, he kind of wised up and realized that nothing in this world was going to make him happy. And nothing in this world was going to make him feel whole. And he soon discovered that he wasn't just somebody who was just dropped on this earth, someone who was just wandering around, but that he had meaning, and he was a spiritual being, and he longed for a relationship with the one who made him. Um, he, he longed for something that was bigger than himself. If you guys have ever had that feeling of, of longing for something that's bigger than you, something that's bigger than stuff, something that's bigger than being liked. And he longed for a relationship with the one that made him. And this is what he kind of discovered along the way. And we're going to look at this, okay? He discovered three things he felt like we were meant to do, okay? The first one was to enjoy life fully. Um, And I'm going to read this scripture right here that goes along with it. This is from Ecclesiastes 2, 24 through 25. There is nothing better for a person than that he should eat and drink and find enjoyment in his toil. This also I saw is from the hand of God. For apart from him, who can eat or who can have enjoyment? So basically, Solomon concluded that real, lasting fun, enjoyment, and satisfaction can't be experienced until you bring God into your life equation. True fun really is a gift from God because the things that we enjoy are from Him. And those are, and He made those things for us to enjoy them. And the cool part is, too, is that He gives us permission to enjoy those things. God wants us to live a full, happy life. Um, together. So that's kind of the first thing that he found that we were meant to do. The second thing that he found was that we need to take God seriously in our life. Um, guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Go near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools. But do not know that they do wrong. Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth, so let your words be few. So what he kind of discovered was that give God the reverence, the respect, and honor that he deserves. Um, This reverence and honor for God is going to help guide us as we make decisions. It's going to help us honor God and the life that we've been given. Because that's what God wants us to do. He wants to honor and wants us to do something with this life that he's given us. He didn't give us just this life to do nothing with it. Um, And so he, he discovered that Honoring God and being humble with God was going to help him not live a mediocre, kind of wasted life out there. All right, so the third thing that he discovered was that to seek God now. Okay, and this scripture is from Ecclesiastes 12.1. Remember your creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you say, I find no pleasure in him. So basically what he's saying is that Remembering God is the number one ingredient for a happy life. It means that you recognize God and you understand, like I said before, that you're not this meaningless thing floating around, but you have purpose. You understand that you need God in your life. Um, And the thing is, is that God presents himself to us daily. Daily, he's saying, calling out our name, Allison, Allison, I'm here. And the thing is is that he so badly wants us to recognize him. And throughout the Old Testament and throughout throughout the whole Bible, God talks about this covenant that he's made with us. And that this covenant that he's made with us will never be broken. At times it could be stretched, but that covenant that he's made with us, that he's going to be there and he's going to be our Savior, it can never be broken. And the thing too is, is that as God continually offers himself to us, There's only so much he can do 
to, to, to offer himself. He's not going to make us believe in him. He can't do that. So at some point, we have to decide that, that we're going to make that choice to believe in him. Um, and so if you haven't found a relationship with God yet, or you haven't found him in a while, part of what I want to ask this morning is, what's making you wait? Why don't you do it now? There's nothing in this world that's worth waiting for it than to be in a relationship with God who's going to give you this lasting um, happiness and long, full life that we're talking about this morning. So, from these things that he found that we were meant to do, he found if we do these things, there's four things that we're going to gain. Okay? The first thing that he said that we're going to gain is that we're going to see life more clearly. So getting your, response, your priorities in order causes life to make a lot more sense. Um, when your priorities are in order, um, you, get, you, may get, you get smarter, you'll gain more wisdom, you'll interpret life easier in a better way, and you'll have someone to help you interpret that life um, better. The second thing is that you'll discover your life's purpose. Putting God first in your life is going to help you find answers for a lot of questions that a lot of us ask. And a lot of us ask these throughout our whole entire life. And some of us never really find the answers. But questions like, who am I? Um, why am I here? Why was I created? Knowing God gives us an identity. It gives us a purpose. It gives us a mission. And it gives us a reason to live. Um, and God, the cool thing is God has incredible plans for, for each of us. And as we pursue him in our life, those plans will, continue, will come out um, as we continue to pursue him. The third thing is that you'll never lose hope. And here's a scripture. This is a wonderful scripture that I love. Go home, mark it in your Bibles. Um, Philippians 1.6. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. Um, so what this is saying is that Knowing this, knowing Jesus, being in a relationship with him, brings peace to your heart and your mind. And some of you may have had that experience where you've had that peace in your heart. Um, and that's what it's going to do. It's going to make all the sacrifices, the struggles, the things we go through in life, it's going to make that worth it. And it's going to give us hope. It also helps us as we go through our life, and you, some of you may have already experienced this, through our lives, life, we're going to have bumps in the road. Um, things may be hard, but having a relationship with God is going to make you have a firm foundation that you're going to be able to lean on in those times when things are, things are tough. Uh, and the last thing that he said was that you're going to enjoy lasting happiness. Um, once you see life through God's eyes, you begin to experience the meaning of life itself and the kind of life that he wants you to enjoy. Um, it's happiness not based on you, but in rooted in your relationship with Christ. Um, and God wants us to be happy. He wants us to live a long, full, happy life. Um, and a life that is, is, is pursuing him and building that relationship with him. Um, maybe you guys have spent some time dabbling in the things that Solomon did. Um, seeking and trying to find meaning in your life. And maybe coming across things that um, didn't work. You've tried something, but I still kind of have this emptiness or this void in your life. Um, maybe you've been here at church before and you have um, you be here, you're here every Sunday but you still are feeling that inside um, and maybe you're choosing to deal with that void or that unhappiness or troubles in your life in an unhealthy way um, but God tells us over and over again that he wants to come in and fill that he wants to come in and fill that void he wants to give our life meaning and this morning, I hope that what we learned from Solomon and his, and his um, journeys that he went on is that he, he discovered that he felt like life was meaningless without God and that God wants to give us that meaning. He wants to, he wants to provide that for us. And so I hope you come along with me and, help, and, and, and continue to pursue that. Um, here in our student ministry, that's what we want to do. We want to be here with you. We want to help you as you're trying to figure out your relationship with God. And... The cool thing, too, is that you have a bunch of people sitting around you who are trying to figure that out, too, and who are pursuing a relationship and trying to figure out what that means in their life. And so this is a place where we can do that, and, um, and I hope you will continue to pursue God in your own life. All right. So let's um, close in a word of prayer.